guys, Paul here. Air pollution affects most of us who are living in a populated area, city, town. Um, if you're watching this on the internet, you're probably experiencing some air pollution. Now, there are a couple good sites to keep aware of. If you're in the U.S., check out air.gov. I'm leaving links to the uh, sites in the description below. Um, this site will tell you real time the air quality index as well as uh, WAQI.info. This is a global site which will tell you air pollution worldwide. If you're in Europe here, for example, um, just click on any city, any area. It will tell you the air quality index where you live. Really helpful sites for staying um, up to date. If you suffer from um, pulmonary disorder, or any kind of asthma, or, or just sensitive to particle pollution like I am, then these sites are really helpful to check out if you're experiencing a day that's kind of rough. Now, we are all affected by air pollution pretty much, including uh, particle pollution, aerosol pollution, as evidenced by this NASA model, that's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration model showing globally aerosol pollution. Now this can come in the form of dust, sand, volcanic ash, sea salt, and 10% human-made aerosols and fine particulate matter that can enter the bloodstream and the lungs and create heart attacks, strokes, um, lung problems. You see the only exceptions here worldwide are pretty much the coast of Alaska as well as the Arctic Circle. In other words, you, we really can't get away from this living in populated areas. And we, that's what I mean, we're all experiencing some air pollution. Here we see on the west coast of Africa, the Amazon basin in Brazil, but even uh, fires and, and ash and dust. Um, in Australia, you've got it pretty good. Good air quality down under, you Aussies. Am I saying that right? Um, Australia looks like great air quality, as well as the Himalayas, um, north of India and Nepal. So the air quality is, is pretty good up there as far as particle pollution goes. And then th that's a real bugger, that particle pollution, because the uh, particles are so small, again, they enter our blood vessels and lungs. Now here's a, um, a model um, rendered by the European Space Agency, and this is global pollution monitored over an 18-month period as far as sources of global pollution. And here we can see North America, the Ohio Valley, the eastern seaboard is just Bummersville in the U.S., as well as northern Germany, eastern Europe, even the London, England area, bad news. You know, I'm going to zoom in here, bring it in a little closer here to the U.S. to show you what I'm talking about. Um, if you're living anywhere from Washington, D.C., right up through Boston, Massachusetts, it's really bad. You're, you're breathing bad air. Now, maybe not on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, but overall, over an 18-month period, it is affecting your health. And you notice the only clean air really here in North America um, is in northern Quebec or the Great Plains states or uh, Manitoba, Vancouver area. You can even see here that the Seattle and Portland, Oregon areas have a little bit of pollution. And of course, the Los Angeles area really bad. However, the area in between San Francisco and L.A., the Monterey, Santa Cruz area is pretty good as well as Northern California and the Oregon coast. Looks like great air for you people living in NoCal and along the Oregon coast. But elsewhere in the US, it's really not that great unless you wanna be living up in Northern Montana or North Dakota. Again, most of us living in populated areas, we are affected by air pollution. If you're in South America, it looks pretty good except for some cities along the coast. Um, but South America and Africa for the most part. Now remember, these um, countries like South 
America and South Africa are still experiencing particle pollution. Check out China there. Um, just horrible. And Australia looks really good um, as far as global air pollution on this European Space Agency model. Now here's a NASA model um, forecasting mortality rates over the next 20 years as compared to 1850. So let me explain this to you a little bit. The blue areas show improvement since 1850. However, that's not saying much because um, the blue areas, like in the deep south, they were burning crops, burning wood, and there was a lot of smoke in the air. So you can pretty much put a brown color on these blue areas, in my opinion, um, as far as air quality overall. This is, again, compared to mortality from 1850. And you can see all the brown areas show an increase in mortality rates from 1850. And you can see that happening all through the Ohio Valley, the Midwestern states, the Eastern seaboard. Again, you have to get up into Northern Quebec to see any relief from that uh, mortality rates related to air pollution. You also see relief on the West Coast again, in Northern California, the Oregon area, and the Great Plains states. Moving into Europe, I mean, check this out. I know I have a lot of European viewers on my channel. You guys are basically screwed as far as air quality goes in the next 20 years. Now, this is a lot of what's being produced in Europe, but remember that you're also getting a lot of pollution from neighboring countries. Even Scandinavia, as I'm showing here, historically great air quality is going to begin to suffer from air pollution, including uh, Sweden, Stockholm. You're gonna to have to get up into Northern Finland and Northern Norway to have clean air. India and China are already um, epidemic uh, air quality problems. And Australia is, again, a really good um, country to be as far as clean air. Um, it got chopped off a little bit on this map, but it's really good. You Aussies down under, really good air, as well as Iceland, Greenland. I mean, who's living in Greenland, right? Newfoundland and eastern Canada, really good air. And the eastern provinces of Canada are not faring too badly but you can see it's it's really uh, you really have to get into the northern areas in a lot of these places or go down to the Australia to get the really clean air. I just want to point out this last image again from NASA. This is a carbon monoxide image uh, produced over a three day period in late May into June um, several years ago, how carbon monoxide is affecting all of us, including into northern Canada, you see here, even up into the Arctic Circle. Um, it's more pronounced in the continental US, but just to point out that air pollution is everywhere. And if you suffer from um, COPD, asthma, or just really sensitive to air pollution, like I am, um, you know, maybe you want to stake out a spot where you can breathe easier than some of these uh, really bad areas. Again, I'm pointing out here that the that Northern California and Oregon coast looks really good, and, and that shows up continually as one of the better areas, as does um, Australia, Scotland, and Northern Scandinavia. But again, you're going to have to go northern because even that southern Scandinavian area is going to be affected. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you real soon. Breathe easy, friends.